One more proof of that something very strange happened millions of years ago over the uh, African continent, the Sahara, what we know as the Sahara Desert today. It wasn't always a desert. Ancient Egyptian shock, how a meteor strike solved this 100-year-old ancient Egyptian riddle, this mystery. It's by Sebastian Ketley of Express UK. A meteor strike that took place 29 million years ago over North Africa has helped modern day experts solve an ancient Egyptian riddle that's about 100 years old. The mystery of the Sahara sand glass that was created by very, very strong heat. Ancient Egyptian researcher at Curtin University in Western Australia uncovered the origin of the so-called Libyan desert glass or the great sand sea glass. Tiny fragments of the green-colored translucent material is found all across Western Egypt. It's found all across Libya and uh, Morocco, Tunisia. And uh, it's believed that that's what even changed the climate all through North Africa, all through Saudi Arabia, and all through Iraq. And we uh, discuss this concerning the asteroid strikes that have been uh, found that have taken place there. And recently, uh, a few more craters have been found just by archaeologists examining Google Earth. The one in southwest Egypt and the other one in Iraq were found from Google Earth. They went to the locations and they found that it was definitely asteroid impacts that created these craters by examining the rock crystals. Now these tiny fragments of green colored translucent material are found all over North Africa. Ancient Egyptians who came across the pretty mineral would embed it in their ornament jewelry because it was like a very strong glass. When British explorer and archaeologist Howard Carter discovered King Tutankhamun's treasures in 1922, he discovered these decorative breastplates featuring entire scarabs that were carved out of this desert glass and embedded in the ornate jewelry that the pharaohs and their entourage used to wear. The incredible discovery sparked a hunt for this mysterious mineral. Where did it come from? What made this? And uh, that was a mystery up until today. The commonly accepted theory stated that the green yellowish glass formed 29 million years ago when an asteroid exploded or uh, uh, pummeled Earth. It either exploded over the atmosphere very close or it impacted Earth. The resulting air blast or impact would have washed over the Egyptian desert and it would dump vast amounts of heat into the sand. This sand would then liquefy. Can you imagine a liquid glass? So that's how hot the temperature was and harden it into glass-like quartz minerals, which the ancient Egyptians later discovered and used them as, uh, I guess, they would uh, view them as beautiful and semi-precious stones or whatever. And uh, here you have the image of one of these scarabs in what is, uh, I guess, a necklace or pendant. Ancient Egyptian researchers found ornate the origin of the Libyan desert glass. Of course, it wasn't just Libya. It was uh, all over North Africa. Dr. Aaron... Cavosi from Curtin University believes the desert glass formed when a meteor struck the Egyptian desert at incredible speeds and heats. And heat, of course, the researcher presented his counter theory in the journal Geology after an intensive study of the zircon samples in this Libyan glass. And according to Dr. Cavosi, these zircon minerals show signs that uh, of another mineral, the raidite, R-E-I-D-I-T-E, -E, raidite, which only forms during full-on meteorite impacts. That was the proof that he needed to conclude that there was an asteroid or meteor strike. He said it has been a topic of ongoing debate as to whether the glass formed during meteorite impact or during an air blast which happens when asteroids called near-Earth objects explode and deposit energy in the Earth's atmosphere. 
And he goes on to explain, both meteorite impacts and air bursts can cause melting, but only meteorite impacts create shock waves that form high pressure minerals. So finding evidence of former radite confirms it was created as a result of a meteorite impact. And Cavossi argued that the air blast theory became widely popular following the unexpected Chelyabinsk meteor strike over Russia's Chelyabinsk oblast that happened in February 2013. The incident uh, at that time saw this 65.6-foot uh, meteor enter the atmosphere without notice. Nobody knew it was even coming. They say they couldn't find it because they couldn't see it because it was behind the sun as it came into Earth. Though the meteor entered the atmosphere without notice and exploded in the air, and it damaged more than 7,000 buildings in the process. But the meteor's air blast did not cause any surface materials to melt like the Egyptian meteor did. Dr. Kavosi said, previous models suggest that Libyan desert glass represented a large 100 uh, megaton class air burst. 100 megaton class air burst. But our results show that this is not the case. Now, the quick facts about ancient Egypt. Number one, Queen Cleopatra was not Egyptian, but rather came from the Greek Macedonians. She was a uh, great, 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 great granddaughter of Alexander the Great's sister, Cleopatra. Her name was Cleopatra. Alexander the Great's sister was named Cleopatra. And that was a very common name of aristocracy of the ancient Greeks. Now, both men and women in ancient Egypt wore makeup, and female pharaohs would even wear fake beards. How is that possible? Now, from what I understand, men wore um, black eye makeup, uh, eyeliner around their eye, upper and lower eyelids. It was supposedly something that would uh, reflect the sun away from their eyes. I guess it was like uh, wearing sunglasses. They would it would keep the bright sun away from them, their eyes, so that they wouldn't be blinded by the sun that easily. Number three, the history of ancient Egypt is typically divided into the Old Kingdom, Middle Kingdom, and New Kingdom eras. Number four, the ancient Egyptians were one of the first civilizations to invent writing and a form of paper from the papyrus that they used to use. Number five, the pharaohs kept their real hair hidden from the public and would wear elaborate headdresses to hide it. This is the impact crater that we found from Google Earth that the uh, archaeologists themselves found. And they went there to uh, confirm that it was uh, an actual impact from the rocks and the crystals that they um, examined. And when we panned out from this, this is at uh, the tip of southwest Egypt. When we panned out of this to the left of that pin there, we saw fantastic lava spreads, lava fields, black, and they were like fresh. They were fresh. They were so black. And, uh, and I, we saw that together. I didn't even know there were volcanoes there. But obviously, it's not just the heat from the impact. What happened here was what happened elsewhere. Many a times, you would have the impact, and the impact would cause this heat that would melt the surface, as we said, with the glass, the sand, but it would also shake the area so much that the magma chambers underneath would melt and they would create volcanoes. And this is the upcoming picture that you see now. To the left of this, of this pin, look, at the, look what was there. Look at this. All of these cinder cones, that is what was there. I didn't even know there were volcanoes in that area because I just thought of it as a huge desert. Now, what happened after that, this was about five, this, uh, this Pacific impact it was about 5,000 BC, they said, and it uh, created havoc and eruptions and uh, anomalies that caused famines, caused famines, caused weather changes to the point where all this that was tropical, uh, with wet, beautiful weather and beautiful greenery, as we've uh, um, evidenced on the Sphinx from the water, from the neck down, there was water erosion, remember they said? that the climate changed. Everything was filled with sand, this weird sand. I guess the sand came basically from the eruptions of the volcanoes, the ash, sand, pumice, all this. And um, 
it affected the economies of the area, even Egypt. That's why even up to the time of Pharaoh and the Exodus, we know that there was a famine in Israel even because of this. Uh, look at this. This is how Napoleon, this is a painting from Napoleon's era. This is how the Sphinx was when Napoleon's campaign was there. The, the Sphinx was covered with sand. Under that, when they excavated that, they saw that the whole thing was eroded by water. That's why everything changed. The climate changed all the way up from northern, uh, can you imagine? The northern area of Egypt was all like the Amazon. And it was a tremendous change all the way up to Saudi Arabia. And you even have uh, things like that in India, the Indian glass. And they thought it was from some atomic bomb, ancient atomic bomb. Uh, it could have been from impacts, actually. Impact, not one, but a group of impacts coming in together from day days apart from each other, or maybe months apart from each other. Very mysterious going on. Um, anyway, that's the uh, solved mystery from this ancient Libyan glass. It was from asteroid impacts. And from uh, what they told us recently, we still have no way of protecting Earth from asteroid impacts. It's um, a catastrophe, a potential catastrophe waiting to happen. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.